This video is brought to you by Ultium 365 via the World Designs Electronics and Octopod, the fastest search engine for electronic parts. If you are a home automation lover and you have been trying different IoT platforms for controlling your home appliances and for monitoring different types of sensors, then you need to watch this video from start to the very end because in this video, the IoT platform that I'm going to use is specifically designed for home automation. I'm sure only a few of you guys might know about the Senric Pro which is also an IoT platform and can be used with IoT development boards like ESP8266, ESP32, Raspberry Pi, Arduino, Amazon Alexa, Google Home or SmartThings. By the way, you can also use Blink 2.0, Arduino, IoT Cloud, UV Dots, ThinkSpeak, Firebase, Adafruit IO, Thinker.io and so on. There is a long list of IoT platforms and I have already used all these platforms. You can check my playlist on IoT projects. Anyway, all these platforms which I just mentioned are not specifically designed for home automation and I'm not saying these are paid for home automation but the Syndric Pro gives you that elite class feeling. You can get it connected to Google Home or SmartThings and Amazon Alexa and start controlling all your home appliances using voice commands and of course you can also monitor different types of sensors. Here is a list of all the supported devices. Just click on any device and follow the instructions to set up your device. Besides this you can also make your own device type. I will practically explain this in a few seconds. Syndric Pro is available on Ape Store and also on Google Play. You can use Syndric Pro on iPhones, iPads and Android cell phones. As I said earlier, you can make your own device type and here it is. I'm using my ESP32 development board. Right now, out of these four relays, I'm using only one relay that I am using to control a 220 volt AC bulb and I have also connected the DHT21 temperature and humidity sensor. As usual, before I'm going to explain the circuit diagram, Centric Pro setup and ESP32 programming. First, I'm going to share with you the final test results and afterwards, I will explain everything else. Ultium 365 lets you hold the fastest design reviews ever. Share your designs from anywhere and with anyone with a single click. It's easy. Leave a comment taking your teammate and they will instantly receive an email with a link to the design. Anyone you invite can open the design using a web browser. Using the browser interface, you are able to comment, markup, cross probe, inspect and more. Comments are attached directly to the project, making them viewable within Ultim Designer as well as through the browser interface. Design, share and manufacture all in the same space with nothing extra to install or configure. Connect to the platform directly from Ultim Designer without changing how you already design electronics. Ultim 365 requires no additional licenses and comes included with your subscription plan. Get real-time component insights as you design with Octopart built into Ultium 365. Octopart is the fastest search engine for electronic parts and gives you the most up-to-date part data like specs, data sheets, gate models, and how much the part costs at different amounts, etc. right in the design environment. So you can focus on your designs. Links to the Ultium Designer Ultium 365 and Octopart are given in the description. I have powered up the ESP32 development board and I have also connected the bulb to 220 volt AC supply. Make sure you wear protective gloves while dealing with 220 volt AC supply and when the AC supply is on, never touch the relay module contacts. Anyway, right now my ESP32 development board, my laptop and my cell phone all are connected to the Wi-Fi. You can use the same Wi-Fi network or different Wi-Fi networks, it's totally up to you. Unlike the Blink 2.0 and Arduino IoT Cloud, you can use a dashboard on the laptop or you can use the Syndric Pro cell phone application.
I'm sure by now you might have got an idea of how does this system work. So without any further delay, let's get started. The components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. I'm using digital pen fill on the ESP32 to control the relay module that I'm using to turn on or off the bulb. The neutral wire is directly connected with the bulb while the live wire from the 110 or 220 volt AC supply is connected with the common contact of the relay module and the normally open contact of the relay module is connected with the bulb. Now by turning on and turning off this relay, I can turn on and turn off the bulb. The VCC and ground pins of the DHT21 temperature and humidity sensor are connected with the 3.3V and ground pins while the data pin of the DHT21 sensor is connected with the digital pin 5 of the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module. These are the minimal connections you will need to start with. You can clearly see in the circuit diagram there is no 5V regulated power supply so you will have to use your laptop to power up the ESP32 module. Or you can use my ESP32 development board which has this 5 volt regulator power supply. So the main advantage of this board is you won't need a laptop to power up the ESP32 board. You can use a 12 volt adopter, battery or a solar panel. So if you want to make the same ESP32 development board for testing all your ESP32 based projects then you can download the PCB Gerber files from the article available on electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. Anyway, I connected the 220V AC bulb and the DHT21 temperature and humidity sensor as per the circuit diagram. And now let's start with the Sendrick Pro setup. Open the Sendrick Pro website and click on the sign up button to register a free account. With free account, you are only allowed to use three devices for free with no limitations. And if you need more devices, then it's just $3 per device for a year. This is pretty cool and quite affordable. You don't have to pay for the resources you are not using. Anyway, after filling the form, click on the register button. You will get a confirmation email, so open your email and click on the confirm button. While the device is selected, click on the add device button. Write the device name. Description. Select the device type, AP key and room is I'm doing it for the switch so I'm going to leave the device type as it is and I'm also going to continue with the default AP key and the living room is just fine for this example but if you want you can select a different room. Anyway when you are done with filling the device information click on the next button. On the notifications tab you can enable notifications for alerts and when the device is connected or disconnected and when the device is turned on or turned off. And now I'm going to continue with only the alerts being enabled. So I'm going to click on the next button. You can use the cloud based timer to automatically turn off or turn on the device. Since I want to do it manually so I'm not going to use the cloud based timer. But I can tell you where to use it. Let's say you have installed a PIR sensor and when the PIR sensor detects any movement you want the bulb or alarm to turn on for a specific period of time then you can use this. Anyway for now I'm going to click on the next button. Finally you can click on the save button. Later we will need this device ID, ape key and ape secret to connect the device that we just created with the ESP32 module. Anyway let's add another device but this time it's a sensor not a switch. Click on the aid device. Write the device name and some description.
Now click on the device type. You can see this long list of the devices. Select the one as per your needs. In my case, I'm going to select temperature sensor. On the notifications tab, you can also turn on alert for when the temperature rises above certain value or falls below a certain value. This is pretty cool. On the ESP32 side, you don't need to write conditions. Anyway, for now, I don't need this, so I will keep it as it is. I can always come back and change this, so I'm going to click on the next button. No cloud-based timers are available, so let's click on the next button. Finally, click on the save button. Our two devices are ready and now we will connect these devices with the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module. For this, click on the devices. You can see the two devices, DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor and device one, that's a light switch. First, let's connect the device one. For this, click on the copy button. Open the programming. You can download this entire code from our website electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. And paste this next to the switch ID1. Exactly the same way to do it for the DHT sensor. Now click on the credentials. Copy the APE key and paste it next to the APE key in the programming. Do the same exact thing for the APE secret. Now we will install the Sendrick Pro.h library for this go to sketch menu, then to include library and click on the manage libraries. If you are using ESP32 or Node MCU ESP8266 for the first time, then you will also need to install the ESP32 or ESP8266 port in the Arduino IDA. For this, you can watch my getting started videos on the ESP32 and ESP8266 Wi Fi modules. Search for the Sendrick Pro. As you can see, I have already installed the Sendrick Pro library. Finally, before clicking on the upload button, first make sure you have selected the correct ESP32 board and the correct communication board. You can see the program has been uploaded and now let's go back to Sendrick Pro. You can see the two devices are online. You can turn on and turn off the devices using the Sendrick Pro on your laptop. You can see the temperature and humidity values and you can also do it using your cell phone. Go to Play Store and search for the Sendrick Pro and install it. Open the Sendrick Pro Home Automation app. Enter your registered email ID and password. And here we go. The two devices are automatically added. We don't need to do any settings. So let's go ahead and watch the Sendrick Pro and ESP32 based home automation project in action.
support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you like today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode. And thanks for watching.